Welcome to Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker. Back again, back again with another episode with my guy, Michael. Um, I'm going to be talking about something today that occurred between me and my son, Boo. But before we get into that, Michael, introduce yourself. Uh, nice to be back with everybody. Uh, another good episode here. We, uh, just, uh, I guess I'll just sit back and ask you questions. Well, that's what's up, dude. <laughs> okay, then. But yeah, then in this episode, I'm going to be talking about uh, a little a conversation me and my son had the other day uh, and today. It's over a couple of days about uh, something that I told him. And then today, I had no idea that he thought I was lying about something that I had said to him. So let me catch y'all up, bring you up to speed on what's going on. Um, I had interviewed this guy that has gotten out of prison. He's a rapper, um, a local rapper, Tennessee, Nashville, Tennessee rapper. And he had told me that he knew this guy called Gilly the Kid. I did not know who that was at the time. I did not know he was a famous writer and a podcaster. I had no idea. That's not my lane, all right? So um, he got out, and he had sent a message to me by two other guys that he was talking to. He said, man, tell Joe to call me, man. I'm going to help him, man. Like I said, I'm going to help him, right? I'm like, okay, then tell him. I give him a call, right? So I tell my son about it, and I'm telling my son that, you know, this, this guy, he, he said he was going to help me promote my podcast and help me, you know what I'm saying, because I'm doing some things that he was really uh, in agreement with and try to help me get this interview with this guy called Gilly the Kid, right? I said, okay, I'm going to go ahead and call him. Then when I was telling my son about it, he was like, yeah, you need to go on and get in touch with him, man. Uh, dude, is he, he's major, you know what I'm saying? If he's trying to help people in prison and all this and that, you need to reach out to him, and, and especially if you got Avenue like that, right? So I said, okay. So I went back, and I arranged, you know what I'm saying, with my counselor to be able to call dude because his number's not on my list. So I ended up calling him. And after you know a few minutes checking in on him to see how he'd been doing, how he, how he was adjusting to free world life, I asked him about the interview with Gilly the Kid. And he said, uh, yeah, man, uh, I'm going to work on that in about 30 days. And some, well, no, I actually said 60 days in February because he said, I'm on 90-day restrictions. I can't move around right now. He said, but when I'm able to move around, I'm going to get on top of that, man. I'm going to make that happen, man. I told you I was going to make it happen. And right? I'm like, okay, that's what's up. So when I come back to the phone a couple of days later, I call my son, maybe about three or four days later, I call my son and I tell him, you know, what I just told y'all, right? And I didn't pick up on any signs that he felt one way or another about it, right? But a few days later, uh, I was talking to him. Today, actually, I was talking to my son. And I asked how he's doing and all that, like I always do. And he was telling me about, you know, he's, still growing, stressing about some things. Not so much the stressing is causing him to go one way or the other. It's just a lot of things coming to him, you know, family issues, uh, things like that. Uh, and, and, and then when he finished telling me that, he said, Dad, I'm going to keep it real. He said, man, I think he was lying to me about the Gilly the Kid thing. And I'm like, really? I said, you think I would lie to you about that? And he was like, yeah, man. He said, I'm just keeping it real with you. I said, look, I said, all everything that I told you is what I was told. So I can't account for anything else, you know. And after I finished saying that to him, I was like, boo, let me ask you a question. Why didn't you just tell me that, you know, when you felt like that when we first had this conversation? He said, Dad, I had to come down first. And I took that to mean that he was upset or hurt or whatever, so he had to calm down before he presented himself to me about what he was really thinking and feeling, right? So I, uh, I told him, I said, look, man, I said, don't ever feel like you can't say something to me, even if you say it in that way, if you're upset about the issue, right? Because I've gotten to a point in my life, and I'm not perfect at what I'm about to tell you. I, I don't get it right all the time, but I've gotten to a point in my life where I, um, I don't focus so much on what the person is saying or how they're saying it. Well, I focus on what they're saying and not how they're saying it. So if you're yelling at me or you're upset or whatever the case may be, you're expressing yourself. That's part of me meeting you where you're at. Um, I'm claiming to be the conscious one, so I, a lot of, in a lot of cases, I'm having to be the one to accept the, the rudeness, the bluntness, and all of that old kind of stuff. So say what you have to say to me in the way that you have to say it, and then I'll pull out 
know what I'm saying, what it is that I need to pull out of it. If you're upset with me about something, I'll understand that. Just say it how you need to say it, but don't hold that in. I think when people hold stuff in, it blows up in, into other things because once you start holding something in, now you're seeing things through it. You're seeing the world through a different filter, and I don't think people pay attention to that, right? But I, I wanted to talk about this, uh, Michael, because I believe that there is an approach that people have to take when you're dealing with somebody that might think that you're lying or might be lying. Um, I don't think we make a safe space for people to be able to express themselves in the way that they need to express themselves and be honest about what they're feeling. And I was wondering, have you ever been through anything similar to what I just described or anything like it, dealing with somebody that's lying? Well, yeah, I have several, on several occasions, but I guess the question I have for you is, do you think that your son thought that what you were saying was too good to be true, so it couldn't be true? Maybe, maybe, because today in the conversation that we had, he was like, I think he's checked out the social media platform of the, the brother that got out and all this and that, and it's really not up there like that. Uh, so I think that he probably does think that this dude is lying. And of course, you know, he was in prison too, so he knows how people sell your dream in here, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, I think he does. But I think that in addition to that, it, it triggered something. It triggered something in him to doubt what I was saying. You know what I mean? And if he did think that it was too good to be true, the question that I would have is why didn't he just say that then? I know he said he got upset, but what made him upset? What do you think made him upset? To the point to where he couldn't talk to me. See what I'm saying? He had to calm himself down, which took days later. This has been over a week now. You feel me? I've talked to him two or three times in between that, and this came up today. So you guys have been close his whole life? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I was in prison his whole life. Yeah. You feel me? And we got to know each other when he came to prison. And we're tight, all the way tight, yeah. today. And what we, when, I, when I explained myself to him today, he was like, oh, we, oh, okay, we good. And we moved on. You feel what I'm saying? But it was like, it amazed me that um, it was something that, and he might have been looking out for me. He may not have wanted to talk to me like that, upset like that. You feel what I'm saying? But I think that's tricky. If you hold that in like that, then there's, you're risking the chance. And my son has evolved, so I, I'm not going to say he would have done it. But most people, if you hold that in, you might find yourself looking at that person in a different way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And he, he, he may have just, like I said, he may have saw it as that uh, it was just too good to be true. Yeah. Is that really true? You know, is that? And then just held it in. Yeah, but, but when I called back, a few days later, this is early on, not the one today. He was like, did you talk to him? I'm like, yeah, I did. I talked to him, but I was like, he told me that he's going to make it happen after he comes off house restriction. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. And we'll go from there, right? And I didn't notice. Maybe he did say or do something that would have, if I would have been paying attention, that would have given me some kind of indication that he was disappointed or anything like that. But I didn't catch anything. Yeah, because I'll tell you, like, there's a guy in a pod I mess with. And I was like, look, man, when I get out, don't tell your people don't order you a package because I'm ordering for you. I'm right. going to use this card that they give me. That I got right. to my account. I'm going to order you a package. Right. You can have it. He's like, yeah, whatever. People always say that when they get out. What's they do? Yeah. You know, you hear it all the time. People are going to say they, they're going to do this, they're going to do that before they get out. <laughs> and nobody ever does. Right. In my 26 and a half years, I mean, there's just been... I don't know, one or two people maybe they, they kept it real and did yeah. what they said they were did that. Or, yeah. or, or I, and I've never asked anybody for anything. Right. But you know, for people to just volunteer and do stuff, it's been very few. Mm -hmm. So I see that. You said your son's been out, you know, just yeah. came, came out. Yeah. So I can see him having that in the back of his mind, like, really? Is that true? You know, this, this dude's going to do Right, but see, the, yeah, right. I, I could see him having that thought in his head about this dude telling me that. But his words were, Pops, I think you lying. Like it was me. Like I've made this whole story up about being able to talk to this person. You feel what I'm saying? So you think he expressed himself in the right way? That he said what he really meant? 
Did he really mean to say that he thought you were lying, or did he really mean that the whole situation didn't sound right? No, my son's pretty clear. Right. Yeah, he's pretty clear with you know. Yeah, he, he knows how to express himself. He said, Pops, I think you're lying. You know what I'm saying? And, and all, okay, let me, let, me, let me add to that. Let me add to that why it kind of blew him away. He said that, and I didn't know this. I didn't know this, and I think this is important, too, to the story. He said literally minutes before I called him to tell him about this guy want me to call to potentially set up an interview with him this uh, Gilly the Kid guy, he was trying to get in touch with this same person through his social media. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like, wait a minute, you know, what's going on, right? Because, again, I had no idea that he was trying to get in touch with this person. But all of a sudden, I come up with this conversation of, this dude is going to help me get in touch with this dude, and this is the dude that he's... I don't really believe in coincidences, but I'm gonna use that word. But coincidentally, he was trying to get in touch with at the same time almost. Yeah. You know, it was almost, I guess it was too good to be true, but why say, Pops, I think you lying? That's the part that, you know, I'm really trying to explore and say, wait a minute. And, and I'm also trying to explore why not just say that, you know what I'm saying, the first time, not weeks later. I get he said he had to calm down or whatever, but it was almost like it hurt him. He had these, he was trying to do it himself, then his pops jump in the scene and say, look here, I got somebody trying to get me in touch with this person, and me and you can get on the phone and talk to him. And then, all of a sudden I tell him that, nah, maybe, maybe not. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 It's, 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 I guess it's a touchy situation, because like you asked if I had anybody that had just would just tell a story. Yeah, just a lot. Man, my niece is, world's worst, you know, and I'm like, look here, you, you can tell me the truth about anything. I'm not the one that's going to judge you, you know, right. I don't worry about that. Right. You tell me whatever you want to tell me. That if, it's, if, it's, if it hurts, it hurts. It is what it is. But she will not tell the truth for, for, for the world. Man. I mean, for nothing. But, and, and, you, and you look at that, but see, that's why I asked, you know, about your, your, y'all's relationship. Right. But he hasn't known you to be a liar. So, where that thought came from, that's why I was thinking, did he really say what he felt? Or was he really expressing himself to the fullest by saying that you lied? Right. Or was he meaning that, uh, did this guy just tell you a fantasy or and you right. went with it or what? Right. what you I'm glad that he eventually said what was on his mind. Um, it just I'm just trying to understand what would make somebody make up a story like that. And how did, yeah, what would make somebody make up a story like that? And, but anyway, let me, get, let, me, let me put it like this. Let me put it like this. The point of the show, I wanted to do this show because, one, it's an important thing to talk about. But two, I wanted to show how I processed that whole thing, right, without getting upset with my son. You feel what I'm saying? Without feeling uh, hurt or, or disappointed in him being able to freely express how he felt. That's what I want people to come away from this show with, right? So the first thing that I did, and I want you to, you know, give me some input on, you know, what you think about this. Uh, not knowing what he was going to say because he said it so fast. He said, Pops, I'm going to keep it real, which I think he was lying. That's how it was. It was that fast. So it, it wasn't like, Pops, I need to talk to you. You need to prepare yourself for this. And then I said, okay, come on with it, right? And so he just shot straight out. So what I did at first, without realizing it, I received what he said in the right spirit, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's important because I could have very easily received what he said in a negative way. And if I would have received that in a negative way, then that, there's no telling where that conversation would have gone, right? Yeah, because yeah. you would get defensive. Then he been like, if I would have really gotten defensive, it. right. If I would have gotten defensive. Yeah, what you getting defensive for? You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, and um, it made me think about something that we that I learned in the class we took together uh, with Dr. Anton, uh, and we were we were talking about being dehumanized. I brought that up. We were talking about, it. and she said she said something to the effect: "It's not true that you're not a human. It's not true that you are, you know, this, this, that." So immediately when he said what he said about me being a liar, I said, "That's not true." 
Yeah. It was almost second nature. It was like, that's not true. I didn't lie yeah. at all. You're right? So it helped reinforce me receiving that in the right spirit. And I think that's what people should do when somebody is talking to them or accusing them of something. Receive it in the right spirit. If you know it's not true, don't take that in a negative way. Allow that person to express whatever they have on the mind because, again, you don't know if that triggered something in them and because I think that triggered something in my son. You feel what I'm saying? I don't know what it is. I'm going to talk to him about it, what it was. I'm going to talk to him about that. But it triggered something for him to say that because he don't say that to me. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. He, don't, he don't talk to me like it. We're honest with each other. But it was, he wouldn't have held that in. You know what I'm saying? I just don't see why he held that in. But it had to have triggered something. And he processed it out. And he... When he said that to me today, it wasn't like, Dad, I thought you were lying. He said, I think you're lying. <laughs> Just like, <laughs> what? You know what I mean? But I would ask people to, when you're dealing with a situation like that or somebody like that, you, if you know it's not true, receive it in the right spirit. Receive it in the right spirit in a positive way so that you can try to help the person work through that. It's, it's something about them and not you. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? It, it, it had nothing to do with me. I'm the central figure. You feel what I'm saying? You know, but this had nothing to do with me. Yeah. And I understood that real fast. You know what I mean? And I said, okay. Now, the next thing I did, I explained to him. I said, everything that I told you was true as it was told to me. Absolutely everything. Now, if they were lying, the people that gave me the message yeah. to call him, or if he was lying, I can't account for that. I don't hold the burden of what somebody else is doing or saying. So that wasn't on me. You yeah. feel what I mean? Yeah. And then after I explained myself to him, I said, are you okay? Or do you understand what I'm saying? And he was like, yeah. Yeah. And we, and we just moved on past that. And I just don't think that we do that. We don't give people a safe place to express what they feel, say what they want to say, and then uh, move past that without holding it. Because I don't hold any of that. It fascinated me that it even went down like that. You know? But even, even, even if the people, so for some of the people that you give that open dialogue, they're still going to lie though. Some people still just have that, just it's in them. They're just going to tell a lie. Okay, let's let's play it out then from that standpoint because I'm 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 talking from a standpoint where I know I didn't lie, right? Of course. But let's talk from a standpoint where if the person lied, right? Yeah. I think that you should create a safe space for that person to tell the truth. You call them on what they're saying, present facts as you know them. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? And you got to do that in the right spirit. And if you don't do that in the right spirit, they're going to get defensive. You know they're already lying. So what you going to go aggressive for? I, I, I'll give you the example with my niece. It was about some money, which it, it, it's happened several times about money. And I've always told her, look, you can have it. I don't need it. She felt that she had to lie to me about some money that she had got from one of my partners. She's like, well, I, I put it on the phone. I said, because well, I'm trying to tell her to send the man his money back. You should have never got his money. Send his money back. She said, no, nah, I put it on the phone. I put it on the phone. Don't lie to me. Why are you lying to me? She said, I did, I did. I said, look, I know good and well we ain't went through no fifty dollars on this phone. I've only called him two or three times. So and, and furthermore, I talked to him and he, he you didn't get that money in time. She just sat there. Okay, look, let's start over. What did you do with the money? Well, I, I I did this or that, but I put it on there now. Okay, that's all you had to say now. That's all you had to say was that you did do it, but you didn't put it on there when you said that you were gonna put it on. All right, that's fine, whatever. What was the tone you were using with her? Just like I'm talking now. Like, why, why would you tell me that story? Why, what, what was the Why do you think that? most people lie? To me, you lie out of fear. Fear, absolutely. But she had nothing to fear to lie to what, what did she have to fear? You being disappointed in her? What can she do to disappoint me? She's my niece, she's my blood, she knows that. She knows right, that. Right, but people don't want people to look at them like they're somebody that they can't be, uh, they can't be trusted. I mean, again, I'm in no situation to, to, to be better than anybody. Right, but that doesn't mean she realizes that. I would hope she would. I've been in her whole life. No, but does she look up to you? Of course. 
then she don't want to disappoint you. Yeah. There's no way. It's no. I mean, that's easy. She doesn't want to disappoint you. Most people that lie lie out of fear, fear of the punishment, the consequences of the truth, or fear of disappointing somebody. And I think that in that situation, but but still, how do you create a safe space for her to tell you the truth, like what you did? You said you skipped past all of the yee yah that she was talking, right? <laughs> and you went straight to what you do with the money. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? And then she told you just like that. But she told me a lie like that too. That After that too? I mean, at first the, the lie was dragging on, and then you know I didn't tell one. You had like you it. pulled it out of. Yeah. It. Finally, I was like, look, like my mom used to say, uh, what, "Did you do this before you answered? I already know the answer to this." So that created the thing to not lie to me. You you don't have to lie to me. Yeah, but I think sometimes, and I, I get that too. But I think sometimes when we use that method. You know, did you do this? And before you answer, I already know the answer. Uh, that in and of itself is not saying that you shouldn't call a person out, but that's already you. Are, that's already making the person feel like, well, they don't want to hear what I got to say. They they say they already know. I got an explanation for this, but and it might not make sense to you. Yeah. I, I needed the money. But I lied to you about it, but now you put me in a situation where you're telling me that you already know the answer, so what's the point in answering then? Because I want to I hear you. I want to hear your reasoning for it. Like, the time before. But why not just ask that? Why not just say, give me your reasoning. Tell me why you did what you did. It, I, it's cool, whatever, but why'd you do it? And like the time before, you know, we were getting money from my lawyer. She calls the partner and tells him, you know, in the area, you're going to get the money from mom. He's like, yeah, how much you need? She said, ah, 250. I'm thinking, so I told her, in the long run, I was like, no, I need $1,000. I right. didn't need 250. Right. What did you need $250 for? Right. Because I've never seen the $250. She took that too. She took that. And I was like, look, I don't care about money. It's what, if you needed some money for something, all you had to do was ask. Right. And you can get it. Right. See, my, my, my granddad broke me from money, a money thing, a long time ago when I was in high school. I was like, yeah. Hey, can I borrow eighty dollars? I need to get this flight suit. Right. So I can. Can I borrow eighty dollars? Yeah, I can get eighty dollars. Give me eighty dollars. I'm gonna get the suit. A month passes. He's like, uh, "Did you? Uh, you got my money?" I said, "What money?" Yeah. He said, "The eighty dollars I let you borrow." Yeah. I said, "I thought I asked. Could I get that?" He said, "No, you asked. Could I borrow?" That's right. So you, I want my money back. Yeah. If you just said, "Granddad, can I get eighty dollars?" I would have gave you. I would give you eighty dollars. Right. It was yours. But yeah. you said, "Can you borrow?" So you got to be specific on what you yeah. ask for. Yeah, my uncle taught me that same <laughs> lesson, the exact same way. He said, if you want something, ask for it. If you're borrowing it, that means you're going to pay it back. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, and that's no what doubt. I'm trying to explain to her. It's like, I'm not mad about the money. You just ask me, can you get it? Yeah. Not, not, to, not tell me after the fact that all I had to use it for something, uh, I'll pay it back. I yeah. Like, okay, I want $500 back for my money. She said, that's the <laughs> <laughs> so I said, yeah, you go and ask the bank for money. Money. And they, they give you the rate. You didn't ask me, so I won't double my money. Yeah, yeah, it's you didn't ask me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get to set the rate once yeah. something somebody took it from you. Yeah, yeah I get that. I, I just wanted, I, I wanted to do this show, like I said, because I wanted people to understand that there's a process that you can use when uh, you've been accused of lying, or if you are lying. You know what I'm saying? If you're on the receiving end of the lie, to make a space, receiving things in the right spirit, and making a space for people that do lie to you uh, to feel comfortable, you know, telling you the truth. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think that we need to do more of that because at the end of the day, you know, people that lie to you, eventually you end up cutting them out of your life uh, because you can't trust them. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's, that's easy to do. That's, let's, let's say it like that. That's easy to do. And then, you know, I just don't like doing stuff like that because it makes me think about how they do people in prison. So what do you do when a person lies to you and you, and you know that they're lying to you? Do you call them on it? Me personally, I say that's not true. That's, yeah. That's not true. Why, why would you say that? Right. That's not true. I think you call them on it, but you call them on it in the right way. You don't call them on it to embarrass them. You know what I'm saying? And and then if they tell the lie in public, you call them on it in public. You feel me? Yeah. If they tell the lie between you in private, then call them on it in private. But it's not to embarrass. 
but you got to be careful also because you want people to feel like you're not trying to hurt them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You, you want to try to help them. And then sometimes you got to know when to say nothing at all. Yeah. If you know that they're lying, what's, why use the energy? Sometimes I, I, I do believe you should call them on it, but I also believe that use some discretion sometimes. You know what I mean? When if they lie to you about uh, put it like this, if calling them on the lie is gonna cause you to use more energy that's gonna frustrate you, you might not want to say nothing right then. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But if, if calling them on the line, if, if you keep it in the right perspective and you're trying to help them, yeah, do it. You know what I'm saying? I just uh, was fascinated at the, uh, and I'm not trying to pat myself on my back, you know, but I was just fascinated at the, uh, the growth uh, that I was able to display when my son said that to me. And we ended up laughing about it afterwards, but think about that. How many times have you laughed with somebody that accused you of lying just minutes later. I had to say never. Never. No, and then my, today was my first time, you know what I'm saying? And it was my own child that did it, you know what I mean? But I thank the most high for the lessons that I've learned to be able to process stuff like that out. Uh, and Dr. Anton for pulling me out. If, if it's not true, it's not true. It's something as simple as that, you know what I'm saying? It's not true. Yeah. So why are you worrying about it? Yeah. Yeah, it's quite stoic. But anyway, uh, I'm going to wrap this thing up. You got anything else you want to say? Good. You good? This has been another episode of Doing Time with you. I want to thank Michael for doing that, uh, doing the show with me again today. Peace, y'all.